Hey guys, it's Ashley and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm showing you how I restored an old mailbox. This is our current mailbox in all of its glory and it has been at our house since before we moved in here. And this is the old mailbox that I'm restoring and I will tell you some more about this mailbox and how I came to get it when I start working on it. Here is a materials list for what we use for this project. You're going to need an old mailbox, one 8 foot 4x4 post, and another 2 foot piece of 4x4 post. You need a 1x6 board big enough to fit in the underside of your mailbox if it's a mailbox to be installed that way. You need two 8 inch lag bolts and two 2 inch screws and four small screws, again if your mailbox is designed to be installed this way stain and spray paint in your desired colors and of course you're going to need paint brushes, sandpaper, and some power tools to get this going. We started off by prepping our two 4x4 posts. These were posts that we had from something else that we took off a couple of years ago and they've been being stored in our barn. They're full of nails and before we could get started with them we had to take all of this off. Uh, and I tried to also clean off some of the dirt that was stuck to them from laying on the ground. And as you can see, some of the nails and screws were quite difficult to get out. They were quite big. I don't know if they were eight penny or 16 penny nails, but they had been driven in very crooked, um, beat into the top, and they were a little bit difficult to get out. Here we had already measured uh, the length of our post and we're cutting them to length in order to make a decorative end on the top of the post. The Postal Service recommends that your mailbox sits 41 to 45 inches from the ground to the bottom of your box. So our post was cut to 72 inches tall. This allowed us 12 inches to bury it in the ground, 41 inches from the ground to the bottom of the box, which is the height of our current mailbox, and some extra to stick up above the mailbox. Here, my husband is cutting the decorative end on the post. This is achieved by cutting all four sides of your post on a 45 degree angle. I believe our ends were cut uh, from between one and two inches down from the top. And if you wind up with a point on the end of your post, as you see that I do here in just a minute with a small piece of post, all you need to do is cut straight down on that point and remove it from your post. Then you'll get a nice flat edge on top. Again, this is me working on the short end of the post, marking it to the length that I want, cutting it off at the length, and then marking where I'm going to cut on the 45 degree angle to make my end that's going to go under my mailbox. You do see that I wind up with a point on the end um, because of how far back I made the 45 degree cuts. And like I said before, you're just gonna cut that off and, you, and then you'll have a nice flat top. If your mailbox has screw holes in the side of it, you're going to need a board in order to attach it to your post. We're using a one by six board and it's cut to fit the width of the bottom side of the mailbox. And the length is going to be cut short, probably an inch or so, in order to allow clearance for your mailbox door to open. 
Here I'm staining my posts and getting ready to stain them. Since these posts were being exposed to the elements while they were being in use before we took them down and since they've been being stored on the ground in our barn for a few years, they're rather nicely distressed like old farm wood. So I want to keep them looking uh, a little on the distressed side. Um, so I'm using 100 grit sandpaper and I'm pretty much only cleaning the surface off to prepare them for stain. I'm using a Minwax stain in the color Ebony and my goal here was to only change the tone of the wood. I wanted to leave the grain and the distress marks intact so I'm working in small sections making sure to get the stain down inside all of the cracks and the imperfections in the wood. There were quite a few knots that I had to take special care to get stained down in. And then because I'm working in small sections, I'm going to wipe it off very quickly. That way this wood does not absorb too much of the stain and get darker than I want it to. As you can see, even after just a few seconds, this wood really sucked up the color of this stain. So I was very careful not to leave it on too long. You're also going to want to stain the board that you cut to fit the underside of your mailbox. You really don't have to do this. It's not going to really be seen unless you get down and look up under your mailbox. But if you already have this piece prepared and you're already staining your other boards, it would be a good idea just to go ahead and throw some stain on this piece as well so that it all matches. By the way, I am using a foam brush to put all of my stain on the wood and I'm using a piece of an old t-shirt to wipe it off. I am not refinishing furniture, um, so I am not being too careful about dust and dirt. Um, when you're applying stain like this and you're almost immediately wiping it off and you're not letting any thick stain puddle on your board, uh, you don't have to worry too much about dust and debris sticking to the wood. Now, while I'm waiting for my stain to dry, I'm moving on to work on the actual mailbox. I'm starting out by removing the old stickers, or trying to at least. Um, the lettering came off fairly easy, but the numbers here that I'm working on at the bottom were a different story. We finally wound up using a grinder and a lot of sanding to get them off. This mailbox is probably as old as I am. It belonged to a neighbor that lived here many years ago and up until a couple of months ago it just sat on its original post unused um, because he died years ago and there's no house for this box anymore. So um, eventually the board under the box finally rotted and it fell off onto the ground and I let it sit for a couple of weeks to see if anybody was gonna do anything with it. And then I decided to pick it up and bring it home and give it a new life at our house. So I'm not blurring this address because this person doesn't live anymore. And there actually is no address anymore for this. After cleaning up my sticker mess, I moved on and tried to remove some of the rust from the box. Again, I'm using 100 grit sandpaper and I went over the box a few times and took off a good bit of the rust. Um, I knew I was going to be using Rust-Oleum paint on this box, so after I sanded on it for a good bit, 
and then we got all of the sticker residue off and most of the rust off and I was working with a smooth surface I didn't do too much more sanding I decided that once I got it smooth and got most of this rust off that I would be good to go on paint I went through the trouble of taping up the inside edge and the inside of the door to the box because I was trying to prevent overspray from getting in there. I knew I'd be doing some spraying while the door was open and I didn't want to have to try and paint the whole inside of the box. Um, however, this was probably a waste of time because I still wound up getting overspray inside the box. This is Rust-Oleum two times uh, primer and paint in the color slate and it's ultra matte. I ended up with three coats of color on this box. Again, I was trying to get the surface as smooth and I tried to cover it as well as possible. This way it's going to help prevent chipping and rusting down the road. This is how the box looks after the three coats of paint. Uh, this is the third coat actually drying on here. You can see that the mailbox is showing its age. It's got quite a few dents and dings in it, but you know what? My posts are distressed and the mailbox is old and I really don't mind all the imperfections that much. It's a pretty heavy duty mailbox and I'm glad we have it. I knew I had this red spray paint from a project I did a couple of years ago in the color uh, Colonial Red, which was a deeper red, uh, and that's what I wanted to use, but I couldn't find it when I got ready for it. So I resorted to using this acrylic paint, and I'm not even going to tell you the technique that I used to get this on here because it really didn't work all that well. It was hard to get this even and smooth and luckily my husband found the red spray paint the next day so I, I just actually used the same bag technique that I'm using here except that I taped it down and made sure to cover the whole box and I sprayed the flag with the red spray paint that I wanted to use. After all of my paint was dry, I put on two coats of Mod Podge and matte. Again, this was to help smooth out the surface and to prevent the paint from chipping and the box from rusting later on. I also put a couple of coats of the slate colored paint on the ends of my lag bolts because the silver wasn't really in my idea for the color scheme. But be aware if you do this, some of the paint did chip off of the lag bolts when we put the post together. Now it's time to start assembling and I start off by doing a little drilling so that I can countersink screws uh, when I attach this board to my post and this way that my mailbox will sit flush on top of this board. Now we're going to attach our two pieces of post together with the lag bolts we measured up from the bottom of the post to our original measurement of 53 inches. Again, this will allow 12 inches in the ground and 41 inches to the bottom of the box. On the back side of our tall post, we made a mark for the top of the short post to go and then counted down to three and a half inches to account for the width of that post. 
This way, we know the area that our bolts need to fit in and we can pre-drill the two holes for the bolts with a half inch bit. This is extremely hard to sink in, so I would recommend pre-drilling your holes as far as you can into each board. The battery in my phone died and my husband finished drilling out both of these posts off camera. He started out by screwing the bolts through the tall post that I pre-drilled here uh, into the back of the short post so he would know where to pre-drill those holes into the back of the short post. We used an air wrench to get these bolts in as far as we could, but because there wasn't enough power in the air wrench, we wound up doing it the rest of the way by hand off camera. We used post hole diggers to dig our 12 inch hole, and you're also gonna to wanna to tamp the dirt and use concrete to stabilize. Once your post is in the ground, you can attach your box to your post. First, you want to attach your board to your post, centered as much as possible, and then you can attach your mailbox to your board with the screws in the sides. I had a vinyl sticker made for our address on the side of this box. I'm not going to show you my address, but here's a little clip so you can see the font that I chose for this sticker. This sticker was made by my friend Michelle at Aqua Mountain Creative Designs. She makes custom tumblers, mugs, and glasses, and she made this sticker custom for my mailbox. Everything she makes is made to order, and she has shipping available. Check her out. I'll leave all of her links in the description box down below. So there it is, my recycled, refurbished, and refinished mailbox. I hope you enjoyed this DIY mailbox makeover. If you did, please like this video. If you would like to see more DIY projects, let me know in the comments down below. And if you've been watching my videos and haven't already, you should go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you know every time I upload a new video. We'll see you next time. Bye.